Hi there, good morning. My name is Andy Small. I'm based in Canada and I'm the chair of the I Call Tailings Committee. I'd like to just offer a comment on Rachel's presentation uh, previously, a good presentation. INSAR can be a very powerful tool. And as uh, Rajao indicated at the outset, that information in concert with uh, the engineers and the engineering assessments can be quite valuable. <clears throat> so you'll note that he didn't comment on whether the movements that were being measured are good or bad, and that's totally appropriate, but that's valuable information for the engineers that are responsible for those dams to consider in their assessments of the safety of the dams. So it's a very, I think it's a very valuable tool and I support what Rajo's trying to accomplish with his INSAR. So let's move down to the next slide. Uh, you may not be familiar with ICOLD. So this slide is a bit of a background on ICOLD. ICOLD is an international organization. It uh, represents a hundred countries. We have 10,000 members. We started in 1928 as an international non-governmental organization dedicated to the sharing of professional information and knowledge of the design, construction, maintenance, and impact of large dams. So the picture on the right is uh, the founding group in 1928. It's quite interesting to recognize how so many people were able to gather like that in 1928, representing so many countries committed to dam safety. ICOLD members are essentially practicing engineers, geologists, and scientists from governmental or private organizations, consulting firms, universities, laboratories, and construction companies. And we are an independent professional body. Next slide, please. <clears throat> ICOLD has 29 different committees that are focused on various aspects of dam safety. You'll see committee A at the top deals with computational aspects of analysis and design of dams all the way down to the bottom, committee ZX2, where we have a committee devoted to developing our young engineers in, in, in dam safety. The committee that I chair is committee L, highlighted in yellow, that's focused on the safety of tailings dams and waste lagoons. Next slide, please. I called committees primarily are devoted to developing bulletins related to dam safety. Our committee, committee L, has developed a number of bulletins as far back as 1982. And the most recent bulletin we issued, number 194, is our current bulletin on tailings dam safety. And that's the focus of my presentation here today. Next slide. On the left-hand side uh, is a triangle here that shows the uh, group that created the global industry standard on tailings management. It was made up by ICMMM, which is the International Council of Mining and Metals, PRI, the Principles for Responsible Investor, and the UN Environment. That group uh, created the Global Industry Standard of Tailings Management. So on the right-hand side, there's a pyramid. GISTM provides the specific commitments related to dam safety or facility safety. Supporting guidance is provided by the International Council of Mining and Metals and the Mining Association of Canada. Sorry, Andy, on... uh, mm -hmm. oh, they, they yeah, need yeah. to click to show click, the thank whole you. figure. Yeah, thank you, Annika. Click one time, please. Can you advance the slide, please? Thank you. And click again, please. And two more times. Thank you. So the International Council on Mining and Metals and the Mining Association of Canada have developed supporting guidance <clears throat> that focuses on governance. And we at ICOLD provide the technical guidelines. Next slide, please. Our bulletin is available to ICOLD members on the ICOLD website. The link is shown below. It's, ish, it's presently on the website as a, what we refer to as a preprint. Uh, ICOLD goes through a process of formalizing and finalizing the production of these bulletins. Um, it's just uh, needs to go through some formatting and so on, <clears throat> but the bulletin is available for use by the industry. On the right-hand side are the uh, authors and contributors to the bulletin. Next slide.
this is a table of contents for the bulletin. And it starts off with governance, which is a central part to tailings, tailings facility safety. And you'll see section three is closure. In fact, when we're doing designs for tailings facilities, we're actually designing these for closure. Yes, there is an operational phase, but given that these facilities have to last in perpetuity, we are fundamentally designing these for closure. We provide a dam consequence classification and then followed by sections and site characterization, tailings characterization, design, dam failure breach analysis, emergency preparedness and response planning, construction and operations. Now, we have provided two key appendices, Appendix B and C, which are very important and relevant to the situation in Kazakhstan. They deal with uh, shear strength and stability analyses for dams that have liquefiable tailings within them. Next slide. What we are suggesting to uh, countries around the world that have regulations such as Kazakhstan has, is that we are not suggesting that our guidance replaces in any way, shape or form the regulations and the standards within a country such as Kazakhstan. What we are suggesting is that our guidance be used to supplement the regulations and standards that are available within the countries. An example is the consequence classification. The Kazakhstan Dam Safety Regulations already have a process for classifying the dams, and that classification is used to inform the designs and design criteria, and that's fine. However, our classification system is a little different and it can be complementary to what is used in Kazakhstan. Down the left-hand column are the dam failure consequence classifications ranging from low to extreme. Across the top are the categories that we consider are important for the dam classification, such as population at risk, potential loss. So the, some uh, classification in Kazakhstan I understand can depend on height and size and so on, which is fine, um, but we can have small dams that can have very high consequences. And uh, we think this classification system can be quite complementary to what you're using in Kazakhstan. Next slide. With the classifications, they then inform key criteria related to flood design and seismic design. On the left-hand side of the slide is a table that shows the criteria that we're recommending as a base criteria for flood design based on the classifications. And on the right-hand side are the criteria we're recommending for seismic design. And we say in the bulletin that these criteria should be considered starting points for consideration by the owner. Obviously, they need to meet the regula regulations in the area. That's fundamental, that's a, that's a minimum. What we're suggesting is they consider the criteria offered by ICOLD as well, and they may go beyond to much more conservative criteria, uh, depending on the potential impacts to the owner. We are seeing a trend in the industry where if a dam presents a potential risk to anybody, any population, then the criteria associated with an extreme classification are adopted. Next slide. A key part of the document is a focus on stability analysis. You will see in the top right hand corner, the fundamental uh, targets that we're recommending that under static conditions, normal operating conditions, the dam should meet a target minimum factor safety of 1.5. Then under liquefaction conditions, an analysis should be done that considers the post-liquefaction conditions, the post-liquefaction strength, and it should meet a factor of safety of 1.1. So these are based on what's referred to as limit, oh, go back one slide, please. These are based on what's referred to as limit equilibrium stability analysis. And these are fine for dams that are built of what we refer to as dilative materials. Uh, that means dense, well-built, well-compacted soils on top of a dense, uh, com competent foundation. Um, we still need to look at uh, situations that could liquefy. That's the drained and undrained discussion. Residual strength, that's the post-liquefaction conditions. 
And uh, we believe these minimum factors of safety are appropriate only if you use leading international practice with respect to site characterization, selection of parameters, and design methodology. We, in fact, provide guidance on how the target factors of safety should be modified if you do not have sufficient information. We are also seeing a trend in the industry of moving more towards uh, non-linear deformation analyses. And this is a way of representing the behavior of a dam uh, by looking at the loadings within the dam and how much it can move. However, these analyses don't work really well if you have contractive or liquefiable elements within them. Next slide. So a key message I'm trying to convey today to you in Kazakhstan is that we have a concern internationally, and it's not just in Kazakhstan, it's in Southeast Asia, Central Asia, India, Africa, South America. We have a very serious concern that many of these upstream constructed tailings dams are not being analyzed properly when it comes to liquefaction. On the right-hand side of this figure is a cross-section of Brumadinho, the dam that failed in 2019 in Brazil. Uh, I think many of you are familiar with that failure. It, there was lots of videos on it, catastrophic consequences, hundreds of lives lost. Um, that configuration of that dam is an upstream constructed tailings dam. And I know there are several dams like this in Kazakhstan. I know that in Kazakhstan, there is not a, a, an explicit treatment on liquefaction. The dam safety regulations do not explicitly call out analysis for liquefaction. The same thing happened in Brazil. In Brazil, um, I met with the consultants of the day um, and I learned from them that when they were doing the designs in Brazil and the stability analysis in Brazil, they were following the regulations and they were happy that they followed the regulations. However, the regulation did not call for liquefaction assessment. Had they called for liquefaction assessment, a Fundal, and a Fundal failure would have been predicted, Romadinho would have been predicted. All it was waiting for was a trigger. A trigger could be seismically, such as an earthquake, and you have significant earthquakes in Kazakhstan, or static. Static triggers can occur as a result of uh, loading, dam raising, or deformations within the dam. Both of those happened at Fundao and Brumadinho. They didn't require an earthquake. Moreover, I spoke earlier about closure. Closure is perpetuity. It is forever. And we have to assume liquefaction can occur. So. We believe this is a very important issue that has to be dealt with around the world. And that uh, we see that in Kazakhstan, there's an opportunity for you to explore this further with the dams you have there. There's a video, YouTube video link that's posted here. It's a lecture I did on slope stability analyses that focuses on this in detail for your geotechnical engineers that care about this. Next slide. So in conclusion, we have developed a comprehensive guideline that covers all aspects of tailings dam safety. The guideline particularly focuses on, on the technical aspects. We have some discussion on governance, but the ICMM guidance, the MAC guidance and GISTM have more on that. We focus on those technical aspects, which we believe underpins those other initiatives. As I said, we've given particular attention to the slope stability aspects and stability assessment. And we believe this is our contribution to help eliminate tailings dam failures, such as what occurred at San Marco Brumadinho. Again, to reiterate a point, Kazakhstan has very strong dam safety regulations. I've gone through them, they're very comprehensive, they're very good. However, I am advocating for your practitioners, the owners, consultants in your region, to not just consider those regulations, but also consider the ICOLD guidance. The combination between what you have in Kazakhstan now and the ICOLD guidance will be a powerful, uh, powerful combination to demonstrate that you're following international leading practice when it comes to dam safety. That concludes my presentation.